last week it took people like half an hour to, to tune in. Well, it's the first, it was the first one. Ways. Good. Cool. So uh, uh, we're getting there, getting better every week. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Be Better Golf Live. I'm the host, Brendan DeVore. This is Monty Scheinbloom. Uh, Monty's the uh, World Long Drive Champion of 1992 and also a, a great golf coach. Monty, did you watch the golf at all last weekend? I didn't. No, but that's, that's me too. Like, it's so funny. When I was uh, about two years into golf me, and, and like a year into golf, like I had to see every shot that was on TV. I was obsessed. And now it's really got to be one of the biggest events for me to tune in. Well, well, well for me, it's, you know, I, I take time out to watch the Masters, the U.S. Open, the right. Ryder Cup, British Open. Sorry, yeah. the Open Championship. I know. Um, we, had, we, had to, we had to change our uh, dialogue. Yeah, that's fine. Years ago. You know, the PGA as well. <laughs> yeah. And I like watching the players. Th those are the tournaments that I really get. But, but the simple fact of the matter is, is people don't want golf lessons. They're home watching those. Right. Whereas, like, you know, nothing against the RBC. It's a great tournament. Harbor Town's a great golf course. Yeah. But people are out golfing. They have it on their DVR. They watch it when they get home. And uh, so, you know, I was giving lessons all day, Saturday and Sunday. Well, uh, since you didn't watch, the thing that you missed, I'm sure you saw, is Brendan Grace was the champion. Yes. And Nick Faldo during the broadcast, uh, yeah, Nick Faldo, kept talking about his forearms. You know, he's got, he's got big forearms, not yes. like Paul Casey, but large forearms. And he really uses them well in the swing. And uh, there's some other teachers, uh, some Australian guys specifically. I think it kind of came from like a Craig Perry Craig, school. Craig Perry. Well, don't tell Johnny, don't talk Johnny <laughs> right, Miller, right. Craig Perry, right? He could throw up all over the place. Right. Uh, no, uh, but anyway, talk about the role of the forearms and how, how they can be used or... Well... It's kind of like, it's out of fashion for a while when they were talking about the big muscles and... See, to me, it, 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 the golf swing shouldn't be about one pattern. Yeah. It shouldn't be about, well, everybody has to do this because this is what's right. Everybody's built a little bit differently. Um, the guys with the big forearms that, ha that have really, really strong forearms, yeah. they are able to, the best way I can describe it is they are, they are strong enough to prevent themselves from manipulating the club with their forearms. Okay. I know that yeah. sounds backwards, mm -hmm. but you know, the club, uh, creates a tremendous amount of force, you know, swinging 100, 105, 110, 120 miles an hour. Yeah. And, you know, that's why people say use the big muscles, use the pivot, because most people are not strong enough to keep it, the club from rolling yeah. if they're not controlling it with the pivot, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. But myself would be one of those, I don't have big forearms, but I have strong hands. That's yeah. why one of the reasons why I hit the ball far. But the guys with the big forearms, they tend to be able to prevent that club from rotating, you know, through impact too much. Yeah. Um, so you know that's why that's, JB Holmes kind of holds on it, and he's got massive. And that's why that's why you also see a yeah. lot of guys with the big forearms. They have funky moves like uh, Perry and Stadler. Yeah. Big forearm guys uh, will have a tendency to come what people will call over the top of it yeah, because they, they yeah. know their for, their forearms are going to be strong enough that the club's not going to get away from them and roll too much. That's always been the strange thing to me about hand pressure is that uh, you really feel the, the use of the forearms in the swing and I know that guys with big forearms can have an advantage but at the same time they want you to hold the club like a baby bird so it's like... Oh no no see that's... Yeah. The, <laughs> I, I have a running joke if a, if a sentence starts with I heard or they say, right. it's probably wrong, okay? Right. And, you know, there's that people like, well, Sam Sneed said you're supposed to hold it like a tube of toothpaste with the top off. That was the way he felt. But I guarantee you, if you put him on a pressure meter of some kind that was able to measure his pressure from no pressure at all to 10 mm -hmm. as tight as he could grip yeah. it, I guarantee you he gripped the club close to a five. Yeah. And you'll see that most good golfers will be five on a scale of personally. Right. You know, like everybody's gonna have different, you know, pressures, different strengths, but the, the baby bird toothpaste too, right. people lose control of the club when they do that. They get sloppy, especially at the top. That's the nature of golf tips. It's, it's golf teachers see the you know the rank beginner come in with a grip pressure Death grip. of ten, and they'll tell him, oh no, you want your grip pressure to be closer to like a one and a half. Right. 
just to get them down to maybe a five. <laughs> I'd much rather just tell me exactly what I want right. because golfer, I want to be good yesterday. Right. So I'm willing to go to the extreme like right now, you right. know, for any golf tip. See, here's here's the thing about about golf instruction and golf tips. You will almost always be correct if you take the two extremes and go drive right down the center yep. of them. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, the 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 ones that I like to make fun of, you know, the, the you don't nobody wants to cast the club and go like this. Right. You know? Mm-hmm. And then you've got everybody going, Oh, you need to hold the angle. Yep. Well neither of those are correct. Yeah. You know, the correct the correct thing is learn to sequence your swing properly and this will release when it's supposed to. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. The one thing you missed from the Harbor Town tournament is uh, it's so funny these TV broadcasts to me sometimes because the uh, the TV people of which I'm one uh, are so transparent. Uh, Brandon Grace's girlfriend or wife I'm not sure got massive airtime. She was she was on for at least half an hour. Right. And uh, she's a real good looking. See, woman, but but so no no no. Funny. See, it, it's not it's not golf. Um, the the, the I, I, I'm going way way back and people are saying Monty this is pretty obscure but. There was a, uh, uh, I was watching the World Cup of Soccer a number of years ago, yeah. and um, England was playing somebody, okay, mm-hmm. and Beckham was on the team, and you know, Victoria Beckham was sitting in the crowd, yeah. and next to her, there was a, they also had a great player named Ashley Cole. Yeah. Uh, he was a great player He's too. On the Galaxy now. Right. Yeah. And his uh, his wife's name was Cheryl Tweedy, and she's really she like yeah. Victoria Beckham yeah. shouldn't sit next to her. Or she's world class. Right. Yeah. And I tell you what, they showed those two more than they showed the soccer. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's you know it's it's not just golf. It's it's everywhere. It's, like, it's good to be a pro athlete. It really is. But really, it's I think uh, the thing of man, this is totally off topic. But I think the thing that that women are responding to more than them being great athletes is just. Chicks are just into guys that are that have like passion for something. Right. No matter what it is, you know, right. you go down, even in Silicon Valley, you know, like those guys are doing all right because they're passionate. Right. Uh, so one thing I wanted to talk to you about is the difference when you're trying to get better at golf between, because uh, you, you there's so many different things that a person can concentrate on. Right. But there's so few things that you can really control. Right. So. When somebody's trying to make kind of like, okay, the golf season's starting now, you know, uh, the Northeast is basically thawed and and even uh, some of our viewers in Scandinavia are starting <laughs> to get the sticks out. Right. But, uh, so when you're making your game plan about how you're going to have a better summer this summer than you did last summer, what should you concentrate on? Well, the first thing is for the people that, that have winters, mm-hmm. you know, we're... we're we're out here at nighttime in April and I'm wearing shorts and a right. shirt and I'm quite comfortable. Yeah. So we're lucky here in Southern California. But the people in the winter should literally be working on their golf game all winter and standing in front of mirror and making sure they're set up right. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I walk up, I mean, every, every person that comes to me for a lesson, mm-hmm. I'd say out of every 10 people that come to me for a lesson the first time, either in person at one of my traveling golf clinics or an online lesson, I said out of every 10 people, nine of them have awful setups. Okay. Not just aw- yeah. n- awful, terrible. So, how, 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 90% of oh, the people? Oh, 90%. Wow. The first time they got, the, the setup is just horrendous. What, what about the, uh, Kyle? Who's, he, I mean, horrendous. Kyle's a really good player. He's a 90 percenter. Though. And he was a 90 percenter. I yeah. mean, he was standing so close to the ball, he had no chance. Our production assistant tonight, Kyle from Texas, right, uh, is here visiting Monty. I mean, Kyle and I are built pretty much the same. I hope I'm not insulting him by saying that, but we're built pretty much the same. And and I said I, before we didn't even talk about anything. I said, just wait a second. And I walked up to him and I said, don't move. Let me have the club. I took the club out of his hands. I said, move your right foot, move your left foot, and I, I put both of my feet into you know because we're about the same height and we have both have a little extra around the middle here. Um, and I said, okay, what do you see here? And he goes, well, I see you have no chance to hit that golf ball. Yeah. Because, but. You put your feet where his feet was. Right. The club head where. His right. Was. And yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, for all of those people that have the winters, I mean, the huge, it's set up. Learn this. I mean, and literally it's not something you just, it's boring. Oh, all winter, I'm going to stand in front of the mirror for two hours. Even during the golf season, every day. Before you go to the golf course, during the winter, every day, stand in front of the mirror for five minutes Mm -hmm. and get your setup right. Make this be the summer that your setup is better. I think that's something that that I'm trying to do. 
you know, I kind of hunch over it a little bit and uh, whatever. But definitely not, and, and in that setup, uh, people, uh, w what are kind of some of your tenants of a set? Like you, you talk about this window, you don't want to be too far this way, right, that, right. you know, somewhere. I mean, a tenants set for a setup. I, I tell you what, there, there's three things that if you have these three things, you're going to be close. Yeah. Okay. Number one, you have to have some room for your arms. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're standing on top of it or you don't have enough bend at the waist and hips, you're going to feel the arms. You're going to feel, you know, your torso yep. stuck, you know, yep. even when you're set up. And, you know, the obviously the opposite extreme would be going like that. Right. Let your arms hang. Your arms need to hang. Yeah. Uh, number two is somebody should be able to walk around you and, you know, go like mm -hmm. that. And it doesn't matter if you're unathletic, you have no sense of anything, you can stand there and know, yeah. well, if someone walked up and pushed me in the back, I'd fall on my face, or yeah. pushed me in the forehead, I'd fall on my back. Yeah. And then number three, you want to have, you know, a little bit of tilt in the spine away from the target. Yeah. A little bit with a wedge, a fairly significant amount with the driver. Mm -hmm. And that's one, that's one of the biggest issues I see among you know, amateur golfers is they want to set up with level shoulders and a vertical spine. Yep. And it's just, there's just too many things that can go wrong from there. So hard. Uh, all right, Kyle, do we have any questions? We do. Read them loud. From Danny says, can you explain how to fix my right foot from coming off the ground at the beginning of my downswing? Good. We can. Yes. We did this last week. It's very cool. We're going to get some clubs and let's, let's, uh, Actually, no, we'll, we'll, we'll just talk about sitting. Uh, yeah. Monty, I have this issue, Dave. Yes. And uh, I was not really talking about this issue, but I had just done this big trip to the desert where I played golf against my brother very competitively for a couple days. I was taking these huge divots and uh, not even talking about the, the right foot coming off the ground or early extension or anything. And uh, uh, what did you tell me to do as far as uh, to fix my divot? Oh, I mean, you, you had to come in shallow or you had to stay behind the ball longer. Right. So Monty said, hit this shot with taking no divot at all, just athletically. Because I think that's the best way to fix a problem first. Just give them something to, nothing technical, just say. Yeah, external focus. You know, if somebody's going to give you $12 to, to pick this without, like, you know, hurting the grass too bad. And when I picked it off the ground, I had this nice roll right. from the, from into my instep, a la Jack Nicklaus, and and really good finish. Right. There, there, there's there's three big reasons why, and actually two and a half big reasons why the right heel comes off. Yeah. Number one is when the hips just fire out way too early, and they're just gone, and the arms and hands are just back here. Because yeah. you know when the hips fire out, yeah. you know the right heel comes off the ground. Yeah. Um, uh, an even bigger one is when the shaft gets too too vertical to start the downswing. Yep. Um, people, oh, you got to have lag. You got to yank on. You know, pull, pull the ring handle. the bell, pull the handle. And when every when everybody tries that, the shaft gets too vertical, mm -hmm. and your body reacts by trying to get the right heel and the right hip out to you know yep. get the club. And then all you know anybody that gets their head too far too far forward, you know, the right heel is going to come off. A little bit early but that's kind of a half usually that's it goes along with one of the other two yep uh from my experience danny what i would what i would have you do with working with monty and also talking to some scientists and, and other stuff is uh try to do something athletic first like try to hit some shots taking no divot and, right and record, that's a good one record yourself doing that uh after that do do some drills uh like monty's saying as far as um, feeling feeling yourself coming in a little bit more shallow and a little bit more arms first and less stuck. Yeah, the, the, you know? the, the, another another really, really good one is, you know, the right hip has to stay back longer. Yeah. Doing little, you know, take take a club that you would hit 150 yards yeah. and try to hit it 100. Yeah. So take your 150 club, hit it 100, and your right hip stays back longer. So instead of that move, see my right heel came off the ground, yeah. that right hip stays back yeah. back this way back away from the ball mm -hmm. gives your arms a little more room and you know it keeps the right heel from coming up early all right kyle anything else yeah justin asks he would like to know how to create more swing speed okay well that's a, that's a complicated question but but in uh in your experience where these the type of golfers that watch be better are 
people exactly like Kyle who's visiting from Texas. They're good players who feel like they've plateaued. Right. So how can somebody get who's maybe even starting to now get older and losing some, what are, what are most people doing that they could build some more speed? I mean, you know, obviously being a little, I am not a fitness expert right. and I am not a club fitter. I mean, I know what chef does what, and you know, but, yeah. but my, my expertise is in how the body works and the golf swing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though, you know, I say this over and over again, even though the pivot, the rotation of the body controls the direction that the club goes and controls the rotation of the golf club. We learned last week with the, or a couple weeks ago when we did the 3D motion yep. capture system, the most direct correlation to club head speed is the acceleration of the left arm. Yeah. You know, I've always said accelerate the arm, but it's the left arm. Yeah. When the left arm, the higher the left arm, excuse me, the more the left arm accelerates, the more club head speed you get. Simple as that. Yeah. Justin, I would, I would say from, from my point of view and, and from Monty has said this as well, I think the best thing you can do that anyone can do to increase their club head speed is the value of good feedback. So I would get a swing speed monitor. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And just see where you're at and just swing on that thing hard. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, there's, give it 10 hard swings a day for, for a month and I guarantee you're right. going to get more. There, 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 is, there is no substitute, absolutely none, not any fitness regimen, not any, you know, nutritional, you know, system you're on, club, whatever. Right. The best way, every long driver, this is how they practice for the World Long Driving Championships, myself included. Mm -hmm. We go out and we learn how to swing as hard as we can and still hit the ball in the middle of the club face. Yeah. That, there, there's no substitute for that. And if you increase your max by five miles an hour, your average is going to go up by two miles an hour. Or Absolutely. Like yeah. Okay. yeah. What else, Kyle? Sergio asks, how, how can you create more spin on 100 yard and in shots, say 30 or 40 yards? Now, a lot of people, this came up with uh, Tiger Woods right before he got hurt, the last PGA Championship he, he came in. Uh, he had the shaft leaning a ton forward. Yes. And Brandel Chambly was talking about the, the, some of the best wedge players, you know, they have the shaft a lot more vertical. Vertical. They don't have this super steep. Okay, exactly right. And you and to get good spin on the wedges, because naturally, I, I was a victim of this. I thought, I want to spin the hell out of this. I took this huge divot. And I went, boom, I kept my no. wrist bowed. No. It's not how you get spin. No. The, 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 the short answer is, is getting... You know, you still want to have like a little bit of shaft lean, but you don't mm -hmm. want the, the, but you want to come in shallow, as shallow as you can. Yep. And the best way. Like this. So not, we're not making a V at the ball. Right. We're it's more of a, a U, really a, a more of a U shaped, yeah. more of a U shaped. But, but honestly, the biggest problem I see in better players, like the five to 12 handicappers, even the twos and threes that don't put a lot of spin on their wedges mm -hmm. from 30 and 40 yards. They take a big long swing and then they slow down at the ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speed creates spin. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to hit a 30 or 40 speed yard shot. like zippy speed. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you're hitting a 30 or a 40 yard shot and you're wanting to put spin on it, you don't go like this and like that. Yeah. You go like this and like that. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, you know, in my new video, I'm not trying to plug it, but in my new video, um, it's a video about how to hit the driver farther. And, <laughs> and one of the drills I say, <coughs> excuse me, is take an L wedge, go left arm parallel to the ground only. Don't go past that and then hit it as far as you can from there. It teaches you to accelerate the left arm properly. So yeah. if you can go just like a little swing, you know, just from here to there and then accelerate the left arm, that'll be more shallow as well because you're not all the way up here. You get a nice low trajectory uh, pitch with a lot of spin on it. Actually, uh, Ann Poulter says that he has the world record distance with that uh, with that shot. Just he practices it all the time. I mean, yeah. it was one of his Twitter things. I'm sure he doesn't, but yeah, he just takes this real little and yeah. smashes it. What else do we have, Kyle? I love having you here. I'm gonna have to fly you back <laughs> out next week. We got one that says, if you could suggest one thing for an 18 handicapped golfer to work on in order to improve his or her game 
to lower their handicap and enjoy the game more, what would it be? Well, I'll answer it first, and then Monty, you can just because I used to be that kind of golfer. For for me, the the thing that really helped me, I mean, this is kind of a thing that a lot of people say, but eliminating uh, penalty strokes and <coughs> uh, getting your lag putting really, really good. That was the thing that got me from like an 18 level to like around a 10, and that's just that's just practice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, from a from a management standpoint, absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. but fr from a practice and improving the game standpoint yeah. there there's you know what we were just talking about the i i do you know the traveling clinics i do i get 15 people in a different city every other week and out of 15 people none of them well that's not true so let's say i do three of them that's 45 people yeah. out of 45 people 43 or 44 of them cannot make a backswing where they stop left arm parallel to the ground okay. and then hit the ball. They have no body awareness. None. Of, of Zero. Okay. Zero. So you'll say to them, show me, show me a swing where you're stopping left arm parallel and how far back do they go? They make their full swing minus about that much. Okay. And th to be a better golfer at every level. Yeah. You go to a PGA Tour event, you don't see those guys busting drivers nonstop all day long. They do what I'm about to say. At every level, if you can learn to take out your highest lofted club, yeah. go left arm parallel to the ground, and make solid contact on like a 40 or 50 yard shot, and then take out your 150 club, yeah. left arm parallel to the ground and hit it 100, yeah. you will absolutely, there's a 100% chance you'll improve your game, but there's two hindrances. Nobody wants to do that, yeah. and number two, nobody knows how to do that. You don't know where to stop. No, yeah. nobody, mm -hmm. you know, so, Learning, learning, kinesthetic awareness, proprioception. Yep. If you can learn what this is, then all of a sudden you have some awareness of where your left arm is. All of a sudden, when you start making bad moves up here, all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, I have awareness now. And you build an awareness with this one movement. Yep. And then all of a sudden you start to become aware of other movements. You're like, well, that's not right. So if we did a video called One Drill for the Masses, like if you had to give the this is it. public this is it. something that you could, uh, let's say this was, uh, whatever, uh, Russia in the 1950s, <laughs> and you could put a gun to every, every golfer's head and say, okay, you have to do this uh, 20 times a day. Right. They it's, would get better. And, and, and this is the thing. It's not, it's, people say, oh, well, you know, I hate drill. It's not a drill. 50 yard shot with your highest lofted wedge, that's a very valuable shot. Yep. Taking out your 150 yard club and being able to go here and hit it 100 yards, hitting it into the wind, hitting it in, the, trees, hitting uh, it in yeah. the wind, hitting yeah. it out of the trees, whatever. Those are two valuable shots yep. that, you know, golfers all the way down to two, three, five handicap don't have. Try that drill. And uh, gosh, I'm gonna set a reminder on my phone because I, I hit balls almost every day so, and I don't do that enough. I know. I, I, what, what, <laughs> you know. Go ahead. Uh, I've got one that says, I'm having a problem with not swinging with my arms and with my hips. What can make me stop doing this? This is so common for good golfers. All of them. Yeah. yeah. We got one right here sitting behind the camera. <laughs> we got here sitting one next to me. And you've been, and you were working oh, on I, it for years. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, again. It, so the question, just to rephrase it in case, in case uh, you guys didn't catch it. Um, so the question is, he's hip spinning out and then the arms aren't going fast enough. The arms are slow relative to the body. Right. And all of the new, you know, uh, 3D things that measure kinematic sequences, we see it. Everything kind of fires together, you know, to start the downswing. The, this is turned less than this. This is turned more. These are, you know, we're up at the back of the, up at the top of the swing, 45, 90, arms and hands behind. So if you're going like this, you throw the sequence off. Yeah. And, and we see that in those sequence charts that everything try, starts to fire together to start yeah. the downswing, then the hips go, then the torso goes, then the left arm goes. Right. So, But I, I, would, I would say that this golfer who's asking this right. question, he knows that. Right, and that's, that's yeah. everybody knows yeah, the, the yeah. hips start first. Everybody, yeah. and, and I say it over and over again, I agree, the hips go first. Yeah. But where golfers like, you know, the person who asked the question and you two guys, the interval, it becomes too great. Yep. 
okay? Yes, the hips go first. Yes, the torso goes second. And yes, the left arm goes third. <coughs> but if the interval of time between those body parts firing is too great, you get the issue that, that the, the, the person asking the question has. So, yeah, yeah. sight unseen. So you have to find an intent that reduces the interval down to the correct amount. Mm -hmm. For some people, it might be getting the right elbow forward to start the downswing. For some people, it might be, like for you, you've had a lot of success with getting your left arm to work off your chest as the first move down. For some people, they have to keep their right hip back longer. You know, there's so many different ways to do it, but the easiest way to do it is I'm gonna go back again. Go out there, hit 100 yard shots with your 150 yard club yeah. and learn to sequence better. Yeah. Learn to move something earlier that usually starts too late. Could be the left arm, it could, you know, throwing the frisbee with the left arm, backhanded, you know, left-handed tennis. really good. Yeah. But just going out and throwing frisbees alone feels yeah. really good. So, yeah. you know, if you're, if you're aiming, if you're trying to hit the ball to 12 o'clock, yeah. you're throwing the frisbee to 1030 over there. Yeah. But, but, you know, for the people that are out of sequence and the hips are just firing too early, you need to find, even if it's just as a drill, an upper body intent, an arm intent, a hand intent of some kind that, you know, gets your sequence better. For me, that's about the only thing I'm working on now. And I, I use all these drills and, you know, and different days I'm doing different things. Right. And it's, so. it's. You know, people, you know, th there's a lot of different discussion here. People say, oh, you need to learn positions and swing patterns. That's the only way to fix it because feels are fleeting. Well, I disagree. Okay. The same swing pattern for everybody doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yes, feels are fleeting. That's why you have to have yep. two or three or four of, the, of different ideas that produce the same result. I know Jim Furyk has one, and I think a lot of other pros do too, but I know specifically Jim Furyk has a book of golf thoughts and things that he goes through. And anytime he gets into like, you know, he starts feeling like he's out of sequence or he's messed up, he just starts flipping through. He's like, oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. I think keeping a golf journal is a really good thing as well. You know, it's, it's really, really funny. You know, the, the way to get better at golf is you have to know exactly what the offending move is, yeah. okay? And it's always earlier than people think it is. Oh, I'm flipping at impact. Well, you're flipping at impact because something all the way back here is going yeah. wrong. Or set up, all the, or, yeah, yeah, right. You know, whatever it is, you know, you have to go back to the origin. And then you have to know a bunch of different ways to fix that. Because quite honestly, and I say this over and over again, is, Whatever issues you have now as an experienced golfer, if, even if you're only 20 years old, you're gonna fight those issues until you're 100. Yep. So you better find some good ways to, to manage it. Okay, Kyle, this will be the last one and then we'll, then we'll hit some shots. All right, Dave, all the way from London tuning in, asks a question that Monty and I worked on today. How do you avoid going across the line at the top of the backswing? He's got a bad back and was looking yeah, for some tips. Absolutely. So show me across the line is, is I have the club and it's going that way, right? Correct, correct. So it's pointing out towards first base. Correct. Uh, London. It's right. pointing out towards, I don't know, the cricket pitch in the right. right or right. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, th 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 there's so many traps in the golf swing. Oh, yeah, you can just fix it by doing this. Well, so here's the fix. You need more left arm rotation, okay? So if I was gonna reach out and shake hands with you left hand, left-handed, you need more movement in your left arm where you would rotate the palm down. Yep. Well, the first thing that people do when they see that is they go, oh, you mean like this? And you know, now all of a sudden he's whipped the club behind him and right. then he's, yeah. it's, it's the, the golf swing is so many different coordinated movements. Yep. So in a backswing, the three basic coordinated movements are, is the vertical hinge, mm -hmm. the rotation of the left arm, mm -hmm. and then the rotation of the shoulders, yeah. okay? So when you're getting across the line, one of two things is happening, and it's the same thing, but either the left arm is reverse rolling the wrong way, yeah. or the right elbow is working out mm -hmm. and making the left arm reverse roll the right, the, you know, yeah. the wrong way. 
So a little bit more left arm rotation is one. This in the back. So yeah, that's yeah. that's what will cause across the line like that. Or, you know, it's like waiting tables with the right hand. If you go like that at the top of the swing, which makes your shoulder rotate out and your elbow rotate in. So if this is going this way, look what the left arm does. It yeah. rotates. I always say, like, if you're serving, you know, martinis or right. pizza. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, those are two different ways to approach it. But essentially, you know, the arms are working too much this way instead of that way. So you want to feel more of that. More of this move. Here. Right. Also, we mentioned is bad back. I see a lot of guys, especially uh, people with bad backs, when they're taking their back swings, they, they really stand up on the way back. Yes. You know, so uh, a little unrelated, but how do you get somebody to, to start swinging more within their physical? Because you see a lot of guys like they have a perfect spot, spot here, you know, to, to start doing a transition and downswing. But then they go that 20 percent extra and it gets ugly. And then they got to reestablish it before. See, they... see it's, yeah. it's really funny is, and everybody gets, when I tell them this, they get mad at me. But when you have a physical limitation like that, you quite simply need to shorten your swing. Yeah. You know, because, oh, well, I need to make a full turn. Well, you're not making a full turn. You're turning the same amount if you stopped right here, but you're just lifting out of your tilt toward the ball. Mm -hmm. It's not shoulder rotation. It's losing your tilt toward the golf ball. Yeah. You're not making a golf backswing at that point anymore no, from no. that point back. Yeah. Absolutely and not. And it feels like, okay, I'm creating more distance between me. I feel like I'm getting more, but. So, you know, it, it, this is how I explain to people, you know, what their backswing should be, is the amount of shoulder rotation that you can perform where you don't. So this would be forward tilt toward the golf yep. ball, okay, mm -hmm. where you don't lift out of the forward tilt. Yep. And where you don't tilt toward the target. I yeah. see a lot of people, they make a good swing right here. Ooh, I need extra shoulder turn. Yeah. And then they start. Yeah, I did that. I'm gonna point at you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and, and, and it's it's not a disgrace. I mean, everybody, we all make mistakes in our swing. I always say that one of the reasons why I feel like I'm a good instructor is because I've done everything wrong and by process of elimination, I figured out what's right, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah. It, if you have a physical limitation, you just need to plain shorten your swing. Cool. I'm going to widen the camera out. Let's hit a couple shots. We can move these chairs and we'll get right in this spot. Yes, I'm sure Monty teaches juniors. Absolutely. Yeah, he does. Um, could lack of club fitting cause compensations? Yeah, but work on your swing. Uh, Brendan, your thoughts? Uh, about the towel drill being a waste. Uh, you know, I just, I, I emailed him, I emailed Tony about that, and uh, he's going to do another video for Be Better Golf about uh, training aids and the ones that he likes. So, uh, my thoughts on the, the towel drill, yeah, it's, it's probably, you have to teach yourself to do it without it. So, Which so, towel drill? The one with you put the towel under both arms. You have the so uh, one of the one of the questions was talking about the towel drill. So you put the towel under both arms. And you're trying to swing with kind of alligator arms like this. The idea of like absolute connection. You know, there's that old Hogan video where he's on Ed Sullivan or whatever it is, and he's got his you put your elbows on the shard. And, you okay, know. I'm not much of a believer in that drill. I think okay. it's terrible, but yeah. No, well, that's what this other teacher we work with, uh, Tony Lutzak, doesn't like it either. So somebody was asking about that. Monty, walk forward just a little bit. There, right there, right there. Come backwards a little bit. That's going to be our spot right there. Okay, guys, we're going to hit some shots here. Where are, well, they, they are shorts. You got to give them that. You don't see a lot of teachers wearing shorts. Okay, cool. Let's, uh, That's because it was 100 degrees they say, today. Where, they say, where are the cargo shorts? I mean, those oh, no cargo shorts, yeah. Those well, you know, I, I'm trying to be at least a little bit professional and wear acceptable shorts. Yeah. Cargo shorts are, are, are pariah. <laughs> right. I, it was really funny. On one of my YouTube you videos. Have a collar on, too. Absolutely. Yeah. On one of my YouTube videos, I had some guy just go off on me. I mean, like, real personal stuff about you're a disgrace to the game and you shouldn't even be allowed on property in shorts like that and i'm just like dude it's you know some people get the most joy out of golf in the uh traditions of it and the um 
all the stuff that is like annoying to most other golfers. But somebody made a comment to me. I was playing at a golf course out in Palm Springs in one of my vlogs. And one of the comments that I, I, I didn't reply to, but he says, uh, I can't believe they let you play. What kind of, he said, what kind of, what kind of trashy course is this where they let you play with your shirt untucked? And I was like, all right. My monocle and top hat were still in the car. Yeah. I was, I was somehow able to play. All right, let's, let's see. What do, you, what do you have there, Monty? I have a five. Not your, not your customary wedge that you usually practice with. Well, that was all I had. So let's work on, let, let's work on this today. Let's work on um, this drill that you think, and I think too, can really help people. And it's, it's super simple, but you're just going to hit that five iron 110 yards. Okay? Yeah, something like that. See, you know, the, the, this, this, the five iron, it's about so two. Just to put it in a nutshell, excuse me, just to put it yeah. in a nutshell, uh, Monty says earlier in the video, if you're just tuning in, that the one drill that all golfers need to be doing is they need to figure out what left arm pa to parallel to the ground feels like and they need to take their 150 yard club and hit it 100 yards. Right, so this yeah. is my 200 yard club. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit it 120. Yeah. It's funny too, because uh, when you do that drill, what you have to feel is that I could see when you got to this point, your transition was over, it was starting to slow. Right. And then here, you were rock solid. And, right. And, and that's it. You see a lot of people, they go to here, and then they start to slow it. And then by the time they've only shortened their and, and here bit. And here's a huge, huge deal. This is one of the big reasons why people can't do it, is, you know, th there's been so much about... Oh, kind of loud, so this okay. one. Yeah, there's been so much about, oh, the hands are passive and you don't want to set your wrist so you can cock them on the, uh, on the way down, yeah. you know, it's for lag and all that beautiful stuff. Well, you know, you can't see it from, well, you can kind of see it from this angle. I've got a full wrist set from here. Yeah. I'll try it, okay? okay? What luck would I have hitting this shot if when my left arm was parallel to the ground, I didn't have any wrist set and my hands were passive? So it's, I, I mean, I wasn't trying to be funny there. I couldn't hit the ball, yeah. which is why people you know, can't stop there because they never set their wrist properly. So when you're doing this drill, you're going to parallel and you've got like 90 degrees. 90 degrees, somewhere around 90 degrees, yeah. Now, do you have the cliche going on where at 90 degrees, if you took a line from the butt, it's going to the target line of the that, that's ball, That's as far as... That, that's a guideline, yeah. okay? That's a gu I mean, I tend to be a little inside the ball there mm -hmm. yeah. because if, if I'm a little too laid off there, I have a tendency to make the shaft too yeah. vertical. Yeah, it, you'll do better to be this and go like this Correct. rather than be like this and go like this. Correct, yeah. correct. And that, so obviously you don't want to be like that where the butt of the club is pointed at my shoelaces mm -hmm. and you don't want to be like, you know, out towards you anywhere, you know, in this, this area where the butt of, yes, I will, the, the, you know, the guideline is butt of the club at the ball or at the target line. Yep. But anywhere in here, you're going to, you know, be able to create something. The thing I really liked that I was working on for a little bit, and I wanted to get your thoughts about this when doing this drill, was I, I forget what they call it, but basically it's like a, a point and repoint. Yes. Where you go, you point at the ball and then you hit the ball and then you try to repoint it. Right. The ball. It's just what, what that like, does what is. What to do on the way through. Right. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's the, you know, cock and recock drill, the L to L drill. Uh -huh. I mean, there's some merit to it. Yeah. But um, to me, that, this is just a personal preference. This, I'm not saying, you know, certain things I say, that's terrible, don't do it. <laughs> Towel drill, I hate it. Yeah. Okay. This one, I don't think the L to L, the, the set and reset is good with more than like a 30 or 40 yard oh, shot with your, okay. like doing that with a five iron, eh, not so much. It's be hard to get the face square. Yeah, it's just, it's too much work. The club's too long, too much speed is involved. You know, doing it with your L wedge, your highest lofted wedge, that, that's the one you want to do that one with. So just take us through some practice, hit like three or four shots in a row where you're just doing this this drill and we can uh, have a little side revision here. Keep going. Very accelerating.
Nice golf ball. Yeah. No dimples on Some of these balls don't have dimples on them. Hey, you better have an excuse at the ready if you're going to be a good golfer. <laughs> yes, you know? definitely. You know? Start blaming yourself for things. Oh, no way. Yeah, you're going to start playing tennis. Now, Monty, that's not 125 yards. I, I took too long of a backswing. I felt it. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that one went up to here. I felt it. 185 minimum. So yeah. Let, let's hit a, a, a 125 one. A little self-control here. See, but but you know what? There's the benefit of it. I knew immediately. Yeah. I knew immediately that, you know, I got too long. Yeah. Just a good job. Just a really good... Uh, Body awareness for yeah. this drill. Yeah. Yeah. And guys, we are still open to questions, but this is the uh, selfish part of the show where I work on my own swing. <laughs> See, that's too long already. Even okay. if, if you're too long in a practice swing, you're you're. Okay. See now, now okay now. Okay. Here's why this drill is so good. Yeah. It is so foreign for people to make a swing that short with yeah. anything other than on a pitch shot that their transition sequence just blows up in their face. Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, you need, your body will be forced to improve the transition sequence to not chunk, shank, blade the ball. This is not easy. You know, it, ch it challenges you. See, that was a lot better. Yeah, that was different. Yeah. You can, I mean, th th that... Uh, you really have to improve, when you're talking about hip spinning, you really have to improve your sequence to get back to the ball. You have to be patient in the transition. Well, like, if I wasn't thinking about it, I was just like, okay, stuck in the trees. I just had to punch it. 125, and then there's water after that. I would just go... Like, right, and you, crappy, but it's straight. So, okay, yeah. transition sequence was poor. Yeah. You fired the hips too early. Ah, there you go. See, now you accelerate. See, you are not used to accelerating your arms from a position this short. No. You know? You're, and you, your brain is like, oh, I'm just here. I'm only going to swing there. You're only hitting these balls 70 yards. Yeah. You should be hitting in another 30. There you go. See, it's see. Too, there's a lot more pickup. Right. Now, here's what's important. This is the this is thing that people don't understand. They're like, okay, great, I learned how to hit a punch shot, who cares? You just learned in four swings how to control the position and speed of your left arm. Okay. The speed yeah. of the left arm is what controls, it has the most direct correlation to club head speed in a body part. So if you can learn to control your, your left arm speed, you can slow it down, you can also speed it up. So if you can speed it up, then you can hit the ball farther. Much better. I could use about a thousand more of these. Absolutely. Uh, but it, but the, the way you were talking about training aids, the other, I wanted to ask you this about drills. Uh, Monty says about training aids, you know, so I have the uh, whatever it is, the whammy, and I'm I'm using it maybe two times right. before before I'm take it off or whatever. Right. Then I'm hitting regular shots. Right. Now, with, do you recommend the same thing with drills? See, this is. I, I classify drills and training aids over here yeah. and real golf shots over here. Oh, okay. Okay? A, oh, so this is a real golf shot. This is a real golf shot. Yeah. You can hit 100 of these in a row. Yeah. Okay, so like, let me distinguish between a, um, a, a drill and a real golf shot. Okay? Yeah. So let's say one of my big issues is, is I like to, you know, I like to get the shaft working this way too much, which just makes me spray it all over the map. So I do a drill where I get a little vertical with the shaft, then I lay it down really hard, and then I try to keep it from going way right. Okay. I won't hit more than two or three of those in a row before I try to translate it to my, my real that's swing. that's not a real golf swing. That's not a real golf swing. golf swing. I'm doing an exaggerated yeah. drill. Yeah. The same works like the ball between the knees. Yeah. You only want to do that like two or three times in a row before you try and you know, 
um, initiate that same feel in a real golf swing. But this is a real golf shot. Five iron in the trees. Yeah, hard to overdo this. That's you know, a great shot. I, I, you know, that's a real golf shot. And if I'm doing that with my L wedge and hitting it from, you know, 30, 40 yards, that's again, a real golf shot. You can do that all day long. Just to recap this little segment on this drill, somebody had a great question here. Who is it? Mr. Wall. Okay, uh, okay, what's the point of knowing left arm parallel? That kind of, that question kind of wraps this. Okay, this what it does is, it, it gives you the ability to understand where your body is in space. Yeah. It gives you the ability to hit all of your clubs shorter, and it for sure gives you the ability to eliminate an overswing. Yep. And, and that's three of about 20 benefits to it. So, uh, just a, hit a couple more, Monty, while I, I'll roll some of these questions. Okay, guys. Right. You oh, do that. this drill because very... I'm sorry, it's my contact here. All right, you do this drill, become very proficient at it, then what? Yeah, your, your, your real golf swing has just okay. benefits. Yeah. It, here it is. You've become super proficient at this drill. So here's, here's, the, here's the, this shot. Yeah. Now watch. A little more shoulder rotation. Now you get a full back swing. Yeah. It's so, a, yeah. so here's, here's what we're talking about here, left arm parallel. Okay. Then all I have to do is just rotate my shoulders a little more. Then it's a full shot. It's funny because at the beginning of this, you did uh, couch this with saying, like, I know people say, there's just a lot of resistance I can tell already, like, to people, to, and skepticism, probably rightly so, with people about drills. Yeah, this isn't a drill, this is a real golf shot. That's a good, that's a good uh, distinction. Hit another uh, punch shot here, Monty. Absolutely, Zach. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, whoever did that. Okay. Do the stack and tilt guys have a bounty on your head, somebody says? I don't think so. Uh, any chance of seeing a slow-mo takeaway, please? Yeah, uh, Dave Bucks, one of my uh, most engaged subscribers wants to see a takeaway in slow motion. When I, I, I put up a, a post on Golf Works about questions for Monty, and 75% uh, of people are have so many questions about the takeaway. Right. So if you were going to do your takeaway in slow motion, okay. Well, well, well first of all, ta the takeaway, like Monty was saying, it's this and this and, and this. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to section, yeah. if you're going to yeah. section it off yeah. into three. Obviously, there's hip turn and yeah. what your knee, but from the waist up, I mean, this is an oversimplification, but it shouldn't be. If you wind your upper body and your hands correctly, your lower body is going to yeah. make the proper move in the backswing as long as you're not resisting right. too much. So for me, the big issue that I have is I have a tendency to set my wrist late, yeah. okay? You know, I have a tendency to be a little bit like this as opposed to like that, Yeah. okay? So if I was gonna do a slow motion takeaway, I feel my shoulders rotate and the wrists set kind of at the same time. Th those right. are the two things that have to be cohesive yeah. to me. And, you know, th there, there's, there's two moves that just are cringe worthy is you know the the one that everybody knows and hates which is this one you know where the arms get too inside and the club gets flipped behind yeah. or you know the low and slow where the yeah. arms get down here too much but the one that's actually you know that's more your high handicappers the guy that whip it inside and come over the top you know yeah. but among the better players I'm seeing a lot of this and this one just you know I go like this yeah. and Okay, it's the one where people are like, they've gotten away from this and they went to the other extreme. Yeah. And now they're like, yeah. big, big full swing. You know, it's real easy to stay back here. If you we're make talking this- Talking about, uh, sorry, I restart for this one. Uh, we're talking about if, can, 
can this punch shot drill help with hanging back? So, right. Yeah. So when you're only to hear, your body's looking to generate some power somehow, yeah. and then, you know, it's going to want you to, because look, if you're, all the motions, let me digress here a second, I need to go back. Most people, most good golfers don't hang back. Yeah. They just think they do. Yeah. Um, most good golfers that hang back actually have too much lower lateral motion going this way. So watch what happens to the right shoulder. Oh look, I'm hanging back. Yeah. No, you're too far forward. Yeah, you're actually ahead of the ball. Yeah. yeah. So, so the people that hang back, since that was the question, all you've got to do to alleviate that is get the right shoulder working around you better. Yeah. See, see now I'm up on my left side and I'm not doing the reverse C thing and hanging back. The right shoulder just has to rotate around the spine and get forward. Okay guys, we got two more minutes, so ask your final questions. We'll get a couple more balls. Last time I posed the same question. Okay, I don't think Monty does believe in that. Let's, I'll ask him. Okay, somebody's talking about uh, on TV and other places in golf, you hear about having a consistent spine angle. Okay. Yeah, so no, somebody no, no, wants no. to know about it. No, no, that, that's, that's, that's a good question. There's a misconception here because yeah. if you, because there's three different moves that maintain, there's, there's an appearance that you maintain a consistent spine angle. Right, from this 2D view, right. I mean, it looks like great players are staying there. Okay, yeah. so this is really a really important thing that a lot of people don't understand because you're bent at, at the waist and hips at address. Mm -hmm. That's pretty simple. Yeah. When you make a backswing, you actually lose all of that. But then as your shoulders rotate, you tilt left toward the golf ball. Okay. Okay. Right. Then when you make the downswing, you extend again and then tilt right toward the golf ball. So you go from forward bend to left tilt to right tilt as your shoulders are rotating. Because if your shoulders are rotating around the spine, the left shoulder goes down. Yep. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I didn't lose this angle, it would look like this. Okay, yeah. so yes, there is a constant two dimension. Of the, the, yeah. it, from two dimensions, the spine stays like this, theoretically, all the way in the backswing and in the impact, but it's moving all over the place. And that's what practice does. Yeah. Yes, yeah. okay. So if, you, you know, if, there, if we had the equipment to show where the spine is, my spine is just only slightly tilted this way, yeah. okay? Now, if we're looking here, actually, I'll do it this way. Yeah. Okay. My 2D spine angle from that angle didn't change, but look at how much my spine changed positions. Okay. And look at my 2D spine angle still stayed the same. Look at how much my spine changed positions. So the spine moves all over the place. The constant angle is a 2D illusion. That, you is know, it worthwhile for that to be something to work on as far as like if they're watching themselves on you TV, can't you can't they, they can see the, yeah you can't just maintain a, it, 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 there's something going on if you're not yeah. so like just to give a couple of examples so if somebody's shoulder turn is too flat yeah they haven't maintained the angle your left shoulder needs to work more toward the ball okay and the people that early extend you know yeah. you can't just say stay in I, oh god Stay in your spine angle. Well, thanks. Yeah. You know, yeah. w w what do I do to fix that? Yeah. You know, so that's the problem. Is exactly. That's the, the comment that I used to get a lot, not as much anymore, is uh, somebody said, oh, your problem is simple. You're over the top. I'm like, well, yeah. How do I not be over the top? Right. How do I, you know. You, and and the, there's no simple answer. Yeah. You have to find out why, why you're doing that. Good note to end on. Guys, thanks for watching. Um, this show will be on this summer, every every Wednesday night. There'll be a live broadcast. So be sure to tune in, set your reminders, and uh, have your friends and family subscribe to this channel. Uh, any final thoughts, Monty? I think, um, I think the great nugget that people can take from this is this left arm parallel drill. It's, it's huge. And everybody scoffs, and you know, only half the people that come for a lesson do it, but everybody who does it gets better. I mistakenly call it a left arm parallel drill. It's just the left arm parallel shot. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. learn learn to hit, you know, club shorter and have control over your swing.
Do that, guys, and I think you'll improve. Thanks for watching. Um, I am going out of town. Thank you, everybody. Uh, okay. I'm going. I'm going to Chicago to do a clinic, so oh, I, won't, okay. I won't be here the next two Wednesdays. That's fine.